Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how to make this zebra print beaded kumahima bracelet and this is what it looks like here. So you're obviously using this white and this black colour to achieve the effect and give that kind of impression of the print. And then it's all the way around as well as so you don't have to wear it a certain way. On the wrist it will show all the way around. So this is what the braid itself looks like. So just to give you an idea of the size of this, now the length of the braid is just about, just a bit under seven inches here, but that will vary. So it will all depend on the tension that you use in your braids. So if you have a tighter tension, it might shorten a bit. If you have a looser tension, it might be a bit longer. So it's just kind of a guideline, but you can always take a few beads off or add a few beads if you want to as well, or maybe just one of the colors. So it's completely up to you. And then also it'll depend on what clasp you use as well. That'll add whatever length to the bracelet as well. So bear that in mind. So if you want to learn how to make this braid, then keep watching. So it's then these materials here that I'm going to use to make this piece. And first of all, what I have here is a round kumihimo disc because we're making a round braid. And then as for the beads, I've got obviously a black and a white to achieve the pattern that we want. And I'm just using eight Omi Yuki seed beads, just a matte black and then an opaque white here. And then the cord that I'm using is a 0.4mm Eslon. It's going to be great and strong enough for the whole piece and make it durable. I'm using a black colour in the cord because it's a nice neutral background colour for the beads because obviously one of them is black. But you could also easily use a white cord. It'll be the same difference really. And then we'll need whatever findings we want to use to finish it off. So I've got my Kumihimo ends here. These specific ones are 8mm in the diameter of the size. They're going to fit nicely because we want the ends of the braid or the cord section to be able to fit inside of there using some glue. And then I obviously have my clasp. So this is a lobster claw clasp and then an extended chain with some jump rings. You can use whatever kind of clasp that you prefer. So let's get it all together and let's get started. And then I've also gotten the cord ready here to be able to make the braid. So what I have is six lengths of the Eslon of about one meter each. And then what I've done is I put all the ends together and then again, I fold it in half and put the ends together again to find roughly where the middle is. And then I tied a regular overhand knot just to symbolize the middle. And then I put a piece of scrap wire around this. This is what I'm using. You can use a kumihimo weight or whatever to help pull it down through the disc. And I've then taken all my cords here and then attached them onto my disc. So what I've done is I've taken that midpoint with the wire coming out through the back of the disc there. And I put that in the middle, in the hole, and then I distributed the rest of the cords around the disc. Now I'm not worrying about the numbers, I'm just putting one pair around the bottom and the top dot there on the disc. So just one cord on each side, and then the rest, I'm kind of just distributing them evenly, just to have something to reference to. So I'm just using the dots on the side, and I've got two notches in between until the next pair on each side, and the same on the other side. So this is just how I'm going to be working with it. And then the first thing I'm going to start doing is making a little section of braid of just the cord here before we start adding in any beads. So all you want to do is I'm going to grab my top left cord from the top dot there, bring it over and down, stay on the left side of the bottom pair. And then I'm going to grab the bottom right one from that bottom pair, bring it over and up and stay on the right side of the top. Then I'm going to turn my disc to the next pair. So I'm going to turn it this direction and you want to make sure to turn it in this same direction throughout the whole braid. So just kind of get into that rhythm. But then from this pair, I'm going to grab the top left one again, bring it down, stay on the left side, and then grab the bottom right one, bring it up and stay on the right side, and then turn the disc again. And you just want to keep going like this until you have about one or two centimeters of braid. Now that I then made that little section of braid there in the middle, then we now need to add on all our beads on the lengths of cord. So this is then the setup for the beads here. You can see each card has their own pattern pretty much of the beads. So I'm not going to go through the setup in this video because as you can see it's quite random, the setup of all the beads here and the individual cards. But what I have done is taken a picture of this setup and I'm going to put that on my website. What I'm also going to do along with the picture is have description on how the setup is in each individual card. So what I'm going to do is put a link to that down in the description box below the video here. So if you need to, you can go there and have a closer look. So when you then loaded all the beads here onto the lengths of cord in this order, then we'll need to start bringing the beads into the braid as we continue making it. 
So I'm then just going to continue the braid the same way that I did before, except now I'm going to incorporate the beads in as well. And the card that I'm due to take next is my top left one here. That also matters for when you're loading on the beads, so you do it in the right order to achieve the right pattern. Just so you know, the top left one is the next one that I'm due to take. So what I'm going to do is, basically now, whenever we move a card, we also want to add in one bead. So I'm going to release this top left card from my disc, and then as I'm doing that, I'm just grabbing the very first bead on the card, and then letting that drop down as I'm releasing the card, all the way into the middle there. And make sure the beads, because we want the beads on the outside of the braid in this case, make sure the beads in the middle go underneath all the cards in here, so you kind of tuck it in. It might go in by itself, but you might just help need to help it along by tucking it in. Then I'm going to take the bottom right one, and again, release one bead as I'm releasing the card and let it drop down. And then go to the top. So it's the exact same braiding movements that we're making as when we just did it with just the card. Now we're just adding in the beads. So now I'll turn my disc to the next pair. And again, also remember, with a 12 strand braid here, as opposed to an 8 strand braid, we have to turn it in the same direction throughout. So this is the direction that I'm turning it in. Again, also to achieve the same pattern. So I'm dropping down one bead, making sure it tugs in underneath the cards in the middle, and then taking the bottom right one, and tugging that in. And then move on, turn the disc to the next pair, again in the same direction. So just get into the rhythm of turning your disc in the same direction here, and then it'll become habit without you having to think about it. So, as you can tell, it's the same basic principles as when doing an 8 strand braid with beads. There is a slightly difference when you kind of get into the braid here. So I'm just going to get on a little bit more and then show you what I mean with that. So I think I'm a little bit further here just to show you what it is I mean by the 12 strand braid being a little bit different when using beads as opposed to the 8 strand braid. So I'm going to take my next card here, so the top left one for this pair, and also then drop down my bead as I'm releasing the cord and now what you'll find once you properly get started with your braid and you have a few beads starting to stack on top of each other you can't just kind of tuck it in and bring it across you have to make sure that your cord that you're currently moving is kind of getting slot slotted into the right place so what that means is because your cord is actually coming out below some beads that are already in the braid so if you don't tuck it in properly make sure the cord slots in you're going to have some of the beads and the cord kind of ending up further out sticking out from the braid and that's obviously what we want to avoid. You want it to be nice and the same all the way throughout. So what I'm going to do is you basically want to give it a little tug on the cord so you just get you kind of feel almost a little click when you do it making sure that that bead is going to sit on top of the previous beads but it's actually the beads right underneath that are already in the braid the cord needs to pull in between those beads. So I'm going to bring this down because it's sitting right now in the correct place. The same thing with the bottom one here. So every time you move a cord it's the same thing. Release the cord and the bead and then let the bead drop down. I'm going to pull it upwards a bit and then it just tugs and clicks into place a little bit when the cord pulls in between the beads and actually into the braid and that's what you want. Still making sure the bead that you drop down though is staying underneath the top cords here. And the next one, grab your bead and release your cord as you're dropping down that very first bead. And then just pull it into place. So just make sure that you keep an eye on that throughout the braid. That's really the most important thing with this 12 strand beaded braid. Just to make sure that you don't kind of later on when you've done it, you go back and see that some of them are sticking out a little bit further. That'll obviously be a shame. So just keep doing that, making sure you pull the cord in between the previous beads underneath there, they're already in the braid. So just keep going like this until you've used up all your beads. So now that I kept braiding here and I don't have any more beads left on my cords, now we need to just basically repeat what we did at the beginning. So we just have to have a little section here of the braid with just the cord. So all you want to do is when you use your last beads there, you just continue making the braid in the exact same way. And then your cards here at the end will naturally singe in. You'll get that little ending that we have in the beginning. So just do that so you have about 
the equivalent length, about one to two centimeters or so. Now that I then have that little section of braid at the end, we're now basically ready to take this off the disc. But before we do that, I just want to secure the ends of the cords here so that when we take it off, we don't risk it coming undone. Because obviously it's just a braid, it'll come undone if you mess with it too much. So what I'm gonna do is tie some knots here at the end. This is the last pair that I just used, so I don't wanna use that one. I wanna start with the one of the pairs that I haven't used last. So I'm gonna take cords that are right opposite each other here from those two pairs. Bring them across the middle and tie a knot. And then bring that all the way down to the end of the braid and tighten it. Then I'm going to take the other two cords from the same pair, bring them across the middle and tie a knot. And then pull that tight. So these two knots now sit right next to each other, just right at the end of the braid there. Then I'm going to move to another pair. Then again, I'm going to take the two cords that are right opposite each other, bring them across the middle, and tie a knot. And that's then going to sit on top of the previous knots, but kind of going in the other direction. Take the other two from the same pair. So we're just working our way through the cords here, so we don't have any kind of loose cords when we take it off the disc. Just like that. And then again, we move on to the very last pair here that we need to do. I'm going to take the cords that are right opposite each other, bring them across the middle and tie a knot. And then in this case, because these are the last ones, just for a little bit extra security, I'm going to tie another knot. So basically double knot here. Because if it's just a single knot, they will hold, but only for a little bit, and you can't mess around with it too much, because obviously they will come undone if you mess with it too much. So the last cords here, I'm just going to tie these double knots. Makes it much more secure to then continue to work with. The last two cords, tie that double knot. Just like that. And then I can take it off the disc. And there we go, we here have the braid. So this is what the braid looks like here. So you get this kind of zebra looking pattern all the way around. That nice zebra print. And then all that's left to do now is finish off the ends here. So here, I just got the wire that I attached. I'm just going to take that off and then that's ready. And then here, I just want to get rid of all the excess cord. So I'm just going to put a bit of glue around them and then cut them down. Then that'll be ready as well to use the Komohima ends I want to finish this off with. Where I can then add my clasps as well and the findings. So just do that. I already have a tutorial where I show how to do that. So if you need to have a look at that, I'll put a link to it down in the description box below. But anyway, I'm just going to finish mine off and then I'll come back and show you the finished piece. So this is then the final piece after attaching our clasps here. And obviously the Kumhim wins. And then it'll look a little something like this. And again, because the pattern just goes all the way around the braid, you can just wear it however you want without worrying about one side having to face outward or something. So that's what it looks like. You have this zebra print. So I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and thank you very much for watching. Hello everyone. Today I want to show you how to make this ombre beaded Kumohimo bracelet and this is the example that I have here. So I've just used two colours, so a light blue and a darker blue to achieve this effect, and this nice look here. So what we need to achieve here is this kind of gradient effect between the colours but where they blend nicer together but you also have the two different colours so you end up with this kind of ombre look to it. So that's what we're going to learn, this technique, but you can obviously use whatever colours you want to